Medistand. Understanding Medicine. Professor Aziz Rahman here, and this is the second lecture on hyperthyroidism. And in the first one, we discussed primarily Graves' disease and different treatment options. And I mentioned that there are some other causes of hyperthyroidism also, like thyroiditis. And this is a fairly common condition which may cause transient hyperthyroidism. I think very intelligent approach is needed to handle these cases because many times just uh, wait and see policy may be good one. And then thyroid adenoma, there may be a tumor uh, which may be functioning, which may make thyroxine much more than what body needs. And that is typically described as a hot nodule on thyroid scans. We will discuss this condition and multinodular toxogoiter. You must have seen people with big, big goiters, but mostly these people are without any symptoms because the thyroid is not hyperfunctioning. But occasionally, one of the nodules may start hyperfunctioning and may start producing too much thyroxine, and patient may develop hyperthyroidism. So, in this lecture, very briefly, we'll take up these three conditions. Most of the treatment principles would be very similar to those in Graves disease, but some features which are different than Graves disease we'll discuss. Uh, so I hope you like this uh, video also. Thank you. So uh, as I said, there are multiple causes of hyperthyroidism. We have covered Graves disease, but very briefly we will cover two or three more conditions. One is subacute thyroiditis. Now, this woman has diffuse enlargement of the thyroid gland, but not as much as you see in the Graves' disease. And this woman had symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Now, this is the natural history of subacute thyroiditis. Of course, uh, initially it is normal. Despite thyroiditis, the thyroxine level is normal. And then it is, the initial phase is a temporary hyperthyroid state. Why? Because there is inflammation in the thyroid gland and all the thyroxine which is present in the thyroid is outpoured into the circulation. So, patient may develop a temporary hyperthyroid state. Thyroxine is present in the blood in more quantity, but thyroid is not synthesizing more thyroxine. So, if you do the imaging test, thyroid would show that it is not making thyroxine, but in the circulation there is too much thyroxine. This is temporary state, then gradually it comes back to normal and then third phase is hypothyroidism. Now this is again temporary. Temporary hyperthyroid state and temporary hypothyroidism in most patients with subacute thyroiditis, treatment is just wait and see. There is a triphasic uh, natural history of subacute thyroiditis and ultimately it come back to normal and just leave the patient alone, patient will be okay. But treatment can only make it worse. For example, if at this level you start the treatment and you give antithyroid drugs, patient will stay in the hypothyroid state. So you have actually blocked the natural recovery. So you must, talk, must control your temptation of starting antithyroid drugs if the diagnosis is subacute thyroiditis. You should be assured and you should also reassure your patient that this is a temporary state. And at this stage, if needed, you can start Indirol and Alprazolam for the temporary control of the symptom. So antithyroid drugs should be avoided because most patients, they will recover naturally and become euthyroid and will never need any medication. Subacute thyroiditis, no antithyroid drugs are needed mostly and in the symptomatic treatment may be given and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory and steroids may provide some relief and this is actually a temporary state. Now another condition, a thyroid nodule, a hyper-functioning thyroid nodule which uh, is picked up as a hot nodule on the thyroid scan can cause hyperthyroidism. The difference is, number one, these patients have all the symptoms and signs of hyperthyroidism, but they will not have eye symptoms or eye signs. They will not have the skin symptoms or skin signs. 
and their thyroid gland is not uniformly large you can see the nodule in this woman you can clearly see this solitary nodule solitary nodule may be non-functioning or may be functioning only a functioning uh, thyroid nodule will cause a state of hyperthyroidism now this is uh, evaluation of a thyroid nodule you take history you do physical examination and do the thyroid function test now if all this suggests hyperthyroidism that means the thyroid nodule is functioning is producing thyroxine and ideally you should do the scintigraphy that means you should do the thyroid scan and thyroid scan will show a clearly hot nodule and the rest of the thyroid gland is suppressed why because this hot nodule is producing thyroxine and that is inhibiting our TSH and low TSH will only inhibit the normal thyroid tissue not the gland because not this nodule because nodule is autonomous so in the background of very low radioactivity you will see a, a nodule which is hyper functioning so that will outline the tumor and then although radioactive iodine is also an option but preferred treatment would be surgery how come radioactive iodine is can be considered here why not uh, one would think that radioactive iodine will destroy the entire thyroid tissue no that will not happen because at this stage because the thyroid tissue is actually already not taking up iodine because there is no TSH so if you give radioactive iodine at this stage that will be concentrated only in the thyroid nodule which is hyper functioning so radioactive iodine therapy is an option but in my opinion surgery is better option now if on history and physical examination and thyroid function test patient has got normal thyroid status then prefer test is an ultrasound and ultrasound can differentiate between a solid tumor and a cystic tumor if the tumor is solid and especially if the person is a male there is a chance of malignancy even in a female patient if there is a, a solid nodule which is not hyper functioning I think fine needle aspiration biopsy is extremely important now if that shows malignancy then surgery in this case there will be uh, I think total thyroidectomy a surgeon would know it better but if there is benign nodule just removal of nodule but if it is malignant perhaps total thyroidectomy will be the answer this is another condition uh, in the beginning I mentioned patient may have multi nodular goiter which are mostly non-toxic because all those, these nodules are just colloid they do not secrete a thyroxine so these patients are clinically euthyroid but sometime one of these nodules may start producing thyroxine in excessive quantities this woman I remember she actually presented in a state of pulmonary edema and she had this gland for years but we when we investigated we found that she actually had hyperthyroidism which developed only recently so it is multi-nodular toxic goiter not um, uh, graves disease so if this is the case obviously it would make very good sense to remove this entire thyroid uh, and give that lifelong replacement therapy Management of multinodular toxogoiter investigate and TFTs and thyroid scan and treatment is surgery, pneumocosol and radioactive iodine uh, therapy is also an option, but having a such big goiter, cosmetically not acceptable. Uh, I think surgery is definitely the preferred treatment. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I really look forward to see you in my next presentation which will be on some other topic, uh, maybe on parathyroid disorder. Thank you very much.